presented by the NAACP and Howard D. Corral Elementary. It will be televised Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. on Channel 6. So if you uh, wish to tape it from your television or whatever, um, it will be televised at that time for the first showing. My name is Leah Morley. I am the principal of Howard D. Crawl Elementary and the mistress of ceremony. I have a little introduction here for Martin Luther King. And in a wonderful book called All Saints, Robert Ellsberg calls Martin Luther King an apostle of freedom. King's belief that all people were created equal and his insistence that everyone understand this truth brought him face to face with one of the most profound evils of our time, racism. We honor the memory of Dr. King by taking some time off from school or work or for special programs and speeches as we have here today. We can do more by renewing our commitment by treating everyone with dignity and respect. We can teach our children to do the same and we can become aware of the many places that racism lies hidden in our society and culture. We will now have a welcome from Juanita Taylor, current president of NAACP. presented today by the Portion Branch of the NAACP and the Howard D. Crawl Elementary School. The groundwork was laid for today's program by two ladies, two important ladies, uh, the former NAACP president, Jerry Kimbrough, and Crawl Elementary School principal, Leah Gorley. The children have worked very hard to prepare for today, so listen closely when they come forward to honor one of the greatest leaders of the Civil Rights Movement. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. And now we have an invocation by Reverend Alex Crittenden. things happen from our parents, birthday, Christmas, whatever, we say thank you. If a teacher gives us extra attention, extra time in the classroom, we make a real good grade, we say thank you. And then we serve a mighty God who blesses us from day to day. He gives us great things. He allowed us to be in this place today, to be with your classmates, to be with your teachers. We have parents here. We have district representatives. So we want to say to God, thank you. And for the program that's on today, individuals who took their time to come out to plan this, Ms. Gorley, Ms. Kimbrough, all of your teachers, anyone who took time to help plan this program, we say thank you. And children, it's a wonderful idea each and every day when good things happen for God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit to say thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Trinden. And now, the Howard D. Crawl Student Council, would they, they would please come forward. We have Vice President, Christina Plager, Secretary, Andrea Kelly, and Treasurer, Liz Turpin. They will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So would everyone please stand?
again. If everyone would please stand. Of cooling off 
or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlight path of racial justice. Now is the time to open the doors of opportunity to all of God's children. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment and to underestimate the determination of the Negro. This sweltering summer of Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam will not be content, will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The world winds of revolt will continue to shape the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But there is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the house of justice. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst from freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle of the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must ride to the majestic heights of meeting physical force and soul force. The marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers, in evident, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny and their freedom is an indestructibility bound to our freedom. We cannot walk alone, and as we walk, we must make a pledge that we shall march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies Heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the hotels of highways and hotels of cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro in Mississippi cannot vote, and a Negro in New York believes that he has nothing which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied, and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. I'm not unmindful that some of you have come here out of great trials and tribul tribulations. Some of you have, co have come from fresh air cells. Some of you have come from areas where your quest of freedom have, have left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. Yet for the veterans of creative suffering, continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is reductive. Go back to Mississippi, go back to Alabama, go back to Georgia, go back to Louisiana, Go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern city, knowing that somehow this situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say, to you, I say to you today, my friends, that in spite of the difficulties and frustrations of the moment, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream. That one day this nation will rise up and live out of the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day of the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at a table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a desert state, sweltering with the heat of injustice and oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, the state of Alabama, whose governor's lips are presently dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, will be transformed into a situation where little white boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls and walk together as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, every hill, 
Every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith with, with which I return to the south. With this faith we will be able to heal out of the mountain of despair as stone of hope. With this faith we will be able to transform the genuine discords of our nation to a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to, to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with a new meaning. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom bring. And if, if a, and if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the project of Hill Tops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightened Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow capped rocks of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous peaks of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from the Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from the Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and every moral hill of Mississippi. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. We will let freedom ring. We will let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city. We will be able to speed up that day when all God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestant, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we're free at last. He had courage. 
He was not afraid of consequences because he knew what was right and what was wrong. And if you know what's right and what's wrong in your own life, it will give you courage to stand up for those things as Dr. Martin Luther King did. He was a leader. Dr. King was a motivational leader. He could get other people to do things because he could motivate them, he could lead them, he could give them the direction that they needed, they would follow him, and he could accomplish things because of his leadership. He also was a great speaker. This morning some of our students actually read one of his speeches to give you some idea of the power that he had in using words. He was a master of using words that could motivate, challenge the thinking of people and bring about change. He did not force change through violence or by fighting or by intimidation. He did it through peaceful confrontation, using facts, being persistent, and this is what made him a great man. As important as these things was, he also was a very compassionate person. He used compassion. Dr. King cared about people and was a role model for all of us on how we should respect and treat other people in our daily lives. And he, he did this. He was a role model for it. We learned from him. I'm so glad that our country honors Dr. Martin Luther King with this special holiday. I think it gives us a chance each year to think about what he did for all of us and what this is going to do for the lives of all of you young folks as you grow and develop. It's going to make it for a better country and better people. It's certainly my honor to be here today with you to celebrate the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kimball, and um, Mrs. Kimbrough had uh, informed me that Mr. Kimball spoke at the very first celebration that was put on for Martin Luther King here in the Port Junior School District, and as Mr. Kimball is retiring, she wanted him to speak at the last one as well, so thank you, Mr. Kimball. Now we have various student presentations, music, song, and speeches. We will begin with Garfield Elementary. So Garfield Elementary will please take your seats. They have a wonderful drumming performance for you today. Thank <laughs> you. 
show the diversity of music that we have in our culture brings a sweet, sweet music to our ears. Now we will have Cleveland Elementary, and we have Diamond Drake and Mercedes Blackman that will have some speeches.
you, Mrs. Larner, and the Harvey for All Rainbow Singers. And now we have Evan Petrowski from Memphis, Alabama. He will present us some more words from Dr. Martin Luther King. Good morning. We would like to share with you a wonderful poem that is just simply titled Martin Luther King Jr. You face for justice, hate, and strength. You fought for what should be. You risked your life and gave your life so others could be free. You could have hated what you chose to love and understand. Rejecting violence to oppose and evil in our land. That is fame, but still inspire with hope that won't yield. You call for wood, that's not for fire, with faith your only shield. We marched in protest for the poor of every shade and hue. So many hardships you would endure for those who needed you. You started each and start with mine. Your message still is clear. The color's not a word to find, your memory's always near. Each year your birth's a holiday, the nation honors. No wonder is when we'll see the day your dream at last comes true.
was the founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and the leader of the Montgomery, Alabama bus boycott. He delivered his Immortel address in front of 200,000 people at the March on Washington in 1963. Martin Luther King Jr. believed that the people of all colors and religions could learn how to live together and treat each other like brothers and sisters. In his dream, the people of America would put an end to hatred, injustice, and violence, and a new spirit of kindness, sharing, and unity would spread across the land. He believed that we could achieve his dream if we would, if we would all make a commitment to forgiveness, justice, and love for each other. Martin Luther King Jr. not only believed in these words, but also lived these words. We in the future of peace must learn to live these words. Let there be peace on earth and might begin with me.
to see all the children in appreciation of Dr. Martin Luther King. When I was 10 years old, I met Dr. Martin Luther King in person in my neighborhood, and he shook my hand. So to know him just for those few minutes this day is very special to me. Going to sing the Black National Anthem, let every voice and sing a cappella. Lift every voice and sing till the
and a peaceful war. He wanted peace for everyone, all who are like him. You can be a peaceful child, even a peaceful man. You can be like Martin. Yes, you can. Martin was an intelligent child, intelligent when a man. He wanted good schools for everyone, all who are like him. You can be an intelligent child. Yes, you can be an intelligent man. You can be like Martin Luther King. Yes, you can. Martin was a proud child, and proud when he became a man. He tried to teach pride to black people, all who are our land. You can be a proud child, and proud when you're a man. Yes, you can be like Martin. Yes, you can. Martin was a reading student, kept reading when a man. He knew good readers were needed and necessary all throughout our land. You can be a reader. Read on when you're a man. You can be like Martin. Yes, you can. Martin was a speaking child, kept speaking when a man. His words touched many listeners and hearts all throughout our land. You can be a speaker. Speak on when you're a man. You can be like Martin. Yes, you can. Martin was a praying child. How he prayed when he was a man. He prayed that men would do right with each other all throughout our land. You can pray in your own way. Pray more when you're a man. You can be like Martin. Yes, you can. Martin had a dream, you know, that all people would be free to live and work together in a country filled with peace. You can be a dreamer. Keep dreaming when a man. You can be like Martin. Yes, you can. Martin Luther King was a warrior of love, a kind and loving man. He wanted all to be loving all throughout our land. You can be kind and loving, grow to be a loving man. You can be like Martin. Yes, you can. Martin Luther King said, we shall overcome. Send it throughout our land. You can overcome, my children. You can. Yes, you can. Martin Luther King was a voice of love throughout our country. And that voice is still ringing today. As often as we come together and work together with our young people, our parents, our churches, our community, our businesses, we can be like Martin. Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you.